Question, but I don't think there is. But if there's anybody here that's got something that's not on the agenda, if you want to bring it up or whatever, we can't talk about. If we can talk about it tonight, we can't act on it. So, if anybody on the, not on the agenda that's got something, it'd be Marcella. Marcella, you got anything? No, it's all good. You guys are doing a fine job. All right. Especially that Kevin on these county roads. He's not here tonight. He's doing a fine job. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Sheriff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Okay. I doing? Want to, I'm doing good. Doing good. I just want to come tonight and ask you for permission to maybe start doing some work on the old church building that's in our parking lot. Uh, what I would like to do, just again working with you all, is I would like to build uh, rehabilitation rooms there. We've got all those folks coming into the jail now. All the rehabilitation folks coming into the jail thrive. All the classes we have, we're having to have them in the jail, out in the hallways and stuff because we don't have any room to have them. Or we've got a jail cell cleaned out where we've been having them. What I would like to do is, is I would like to eliminate those people coming into the jail. Does that make sense? Because every time you know, you've got somebody coming into the jail, you got hazards, you got problems. You know. If that church building was there, it's been there obviously, if we could build a covered walkway to it where people wouldn't have access to prisoners leaving stuff there hiding stuff and that stuff and then build classrooms there build a ceremony place there like we're getting ready to have a graduation for uh some people who graduated with their ocean degrees construction degrees we're going to be having that in the judges chambers because really it's the only place we've got that we can have it uh, we've had graduations before where we've had to have them inside of the jail we're trying to get family members in there, but you can't because, again, it's inside the jail. Mm. I think if we make that a community center for even after dark, because we'll be able to block it off from the jail uh, with the with the walkway, uh, even after hours, uh, Thrive or whoever the community outreach folks are could meet, use that building to meet in the evening hours to meet clients that are going through rehabilitation, going through uh, the addiction healing process. I think, to be honest with you, uh, I think it's a perfect place for it. Uh, nobody wants, you know what I'm saying, uh, real rehabilitation centers in their neighborhood, they say. Uh, don't bother me. I mean, that's perfect. It's on our campus right there. Right there, we can we can service them. They got problems that come straight over to the jail. We can help them. They, we've got the people that thrive and they can work out of it. Plus, if you think about this, too, is this. I'm kind of a, uh, I don't know how you, how you say it. I'm, I'm a historian, obviously. But I'm also the kind of person that believes in uh, fate. If you think about it, 100 years ago when that church was built, or 125 years ago when that church was built, you see what I'm saying? It wasn't tore down for a reason. We're needing a place now to rehabilitate folks. Okay? God, 125 years ago, was looking at, hey, 125 years from now, we're using this church. 125 years from now, they're going to need that facility and that space because they're going to have people who are going to need services to be able to get over you know, some issues that the devil's thrown on. Mm -hmm. That's just the way I feel about it. Uh, and with your all's permission, what I'd like to do is, is I would like to be able to get an architect, would probably be uh, the LZ, just deal with them, let them talk to you guys, see what you guys think about, maybe even additional plans that we have for that building. Obviously, we've been talking about doing stuff at that building forever uh, because I'm not even sure if we get someone coming as an architect, they may have to come in and say, hey, this building's not fit for rehabilitation because it is, does have some mold and stuff in it. Mm -hmm. So we just need to get it looked at first. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, I, I'm for a community center whatsoever, I mean, or all, I'm all in for that because I've been trying to figure out how we can, you know, put a new roof on, take the floor down to the level instead of having a slanted floor in there. Uh, put, you know, fix it up to where, you know, you could use it for your meetings and stuff and and it can be a community center for other people that need it on days you're not using it. So uh, I'm all in for that. Um, I'm not a, uh, I think because it's the county's building, I mean, you know, we would be the ones asking Absolutely. people to say, hey, you know, get us a price on this or whatever. And so, um, 
And I think we could also use the opi opioid money for that kind of structure. If the purpose is to provide additional services to, I'm guessing it would be incarcerated or covered. Covered. Incarcerated. It could be both. Either one. Either one. Because like I say, if we've got a covered walkway, then we would be having our Thrive, our addiction classes, rehabilitation <coughs> classes in, in there during building. the day. Yeah. And then they could also hold not classes. Post incarceration. Okay. Um, if we, if that's the purpose, then most likely you could use restricted book good settlement funds. Um, I would want to, we'd need to know exactly how much or close to how much it would cost so that we could do yeah. a resolution approving the use of the opioid settlement funds and then give council enough time to uh, notice and advertise uh, an appropriations requests from that line item. I think what we need to do is get a, a contractor to go in and write a scope of work of what needs to be fixed I and can reach out to Anthony Ayler is the guy who we had to do the roof. The engineer. Oh, the engineer. Do we Instead. know what the total amount that is currently in the opioid? Seven hundred or something. Okay. Uh, I think we can we, we can work together. Mm -hmm. We can do we well, can here, do it here's together. My, my suggestion is this. You guys tell me what you want me to do. I'll do it. I'm gonna stay out of your way. Uh what I would like to do is is let our folks who provide the services to our us in the jail say, hey, listen, what how many classrooms would you need? How big would the classrooms need to be? You know, they need to be a five by 10, 10 by 10, you know, for each classroom. And then after that, then use the rest of it for whatever you think could be done. Because we, we would need to make it a, it's not gonna be a, say a secure jail facility, but it will have to be a secure facility because during the day when we've got people over there, inmates would be there taking the classes with the people that are teaching it. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. And also uh, what we, can use it for is it's like not only just for the addiction recovery but we use that for teaching them like uh, skills you know job skills we're trying to get cdl license and it's all done by 3d now they're using goggle 3ds uh, 3d goggles to do that anything that we can do those classroom type settings we can get them in there and we can get them taught uh and again not only for the inmates but also for folks that job corps job workforce or whatever it is you know what i'm saying job force well, I mean, I think it'd be good to have it set up to where uh, we could run a program for children over there, too. Anything you need to get them to understand, you know, the downsides mm -hmm. to all this stuff. Before well, let's get a uh, let's get a contractor mm -hmm. to go over there and, and write a scope of work. And, I, and I'm thinking of off the top of my head, Lincoln Taylor, just have him go because he's not he's retired now. He could go say, hey, this needs to be fixed. This this we can write a scope of work and then we can advertise for other contractors that wants to possibly come in and do the work so that we can get a you know a fair price of, of for the work yeah. and then we can figure out what we need to do but um, I think that's how we start it and then you know uh, we can have an engineer come in and look at it and see if it's a sound building I mean but hundred and some years ago I've drove by that building for a long time it's it's not going it's not one anywhere and it's mm -hmm. Anthony's just he works with downtown uh, Louisville and a lot of them old buildings and that's his specialty mm -hmm. he, he's a engineer it also for, might qualify if you did want to do like a section that was sectioned off for the incarcerated population there would it would qualify for increasing funding for jails to provide treatment to inmates with OUD, opioid uh, use disorder. Yeah, I think, and of course, something you guys have to decide, you know what I'm saying, if you wanted to build like a classroom on the back side of it. You can do prevention programs and, other, and run those through the same building, yeah. but the whole the, the stated purpose for the, the building is for you know, different types of recovery yeah. related programs or transition programs um, post incarceration. Yeah. Well, you're right. I mean, it doesn't have to be in the footprint of that building. If we could maybe add on a little bit mm -hmm. to, to accommodate some other areas. So I don't know if you were trying to say something. Anymore. No, I mean, I just, I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, I 
know ever since I've come on this board, you know, I, Mike's been talking about this. So um, this is a great opportunity for us to make something with it and, and um, serve a lot of purposes. The, I think the great thing about this is, is that being a county building also is, um, you know, we can utilize uh, our Microsoft and, you know, as far as scheduling goes. And that way it's marked since it's a county building. So, and I'm just spitting If EMS wanted to have something there or an office in this courthouse say, hey, we want to have a birthday party in there, then they can, they can check on there and say, well, you know, it's being utilized from this time or that time, but it's open this day or something, the main part or however we go about this. I'm just saying it'll work. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's well, it's our building. We, yeah. and it, we need to protect it and, and, and Part of that is the historical society wouldn't want you to tear it down anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> so. I can figure that. Yeah. So, and, and, and I'm not for. I'm, I'm all about history yeah. too. You know, what I'm saying history. Also, we have to. You have to continue on. You just can't live on the past. So we yeah. that way we can put it. Put Crazy it in that time too. Yeah, I guarantee he does. But <laughs> anyway, anything that I can do to help facilitate that, and again, it's going to be on our campus, so it's right on the campus where it's not going to affect anyone's neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, so that's we already got those types of events going on there. So mm -hmm. it's nothing that would. I have one question. Yes, sir. Uh, I got. I received a phone call from Kelly Hans. Have you talked to her? Yes. Yeah. I mean, is there a change? That There's happened? changing. Yeah. Okay. What's, just... Yeah. What's happening is, is she started a peer, and I don't know what the what they've called what specifically it's, it's called. Sudden recovery. So. Yeah. Where they they have peer after incarceration, post incarceration follow ups, and they also. What they would do is, is they would take over what Thrive is doing inside of our jail now. They would employ the folks that are doing that job, our peer groups that's inside. That's what it would affect okay. us directly. So they are going to be taking that over probably July the 1st. Okay. So, but uh, yeah, we'll be working with those hand in hand. She, she contacted me and I was just yeah. asking if she contacted you. Yeah, she did. Is there, you said somebody's taking over Thrive's? They're, Thrive is pulling out of Scott County. We're going to contract with Kelly uh, for she any side of the jail. She's going to Thrive. Okay. It's IRAX program. It's what it is. It's a the incarceration program where we have IRAX. It's what it is. So Thrive is entirely pulling out of Scott County? Out of the jail. Out of the jail. Yes. And their contract ends June the 30th. Okay. And is there a reason? Are they, I guess, yeah, why are they pulling out? I, I, mean, I don't want to get too much into that. It's just... Uh, and, I, and I can't explain and it. And I'm not saying yeah. that Scott County has... The issue I have is that we... My understanding was that we dedicated a piece of the original opioid settlement distributions yeah. to the creation of a position that was represented to be yeah. a continuing fund essentially they would be able to once we put up the initial capital mm -hmm. right the, mm -hmm. the issue was getting that 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 would continue to be a service that was provided by thrive we gave him fifty thousand dollars for the first year and he said if i can get it the first year then i can sustain it from that point on yeah and i don't know anything about that because that's totally out of my realm yeah, right. okay so that's that. separate from yeah the, yeah, you're talking about post incarceration stuff. stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just want to make sure. Yeah. All the all the in jail stuff is done by IRAX. It's the state uh, funds that does that. Okay. Yeah. I was seen the other here for a long time. So, but anyway, that's all I. Yeah. You're yeah. Still on the clock, right? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> I'm far. You, President, I've let you down. I'm sorry. Have a good one. Thank you. 14 minutes. All right. Thank you. See you guys. See you. See you. Everything's okay, right? See you guys. Well, of course, you had that sign. We had that sign. Thank you, guys. Okay, see you. Catch your timer on now. <laughs> <laughs> you need that about like that. Uh, yeah. You need that about like that. Uh, that's the last thing you need is a red bull. Sugar free. Okay. Sugar free red bull? Mm -hmm. What's that? Gasoline? 
Yeah. Unleaded. <laughs> have you uh, erased a million yet? Yeah, I have. Thank you. I've got two pages to show you, though. Um, May, we had a really good month. 220,000. Training's at 18.4. Paramedics at 44. Year-to-date total is 1.1 million. Yeah, question. Okay. You keep saying paramedics at 44. Is that... No. Money received from students? Yes. Okay. Yes. That is that is the amount of money we brought in through the paramedic program. Okay. Okay. So, um, and we did change two months ago, I think. We changed to where, because initially the paramedic program money would revert back into 1151, which is my main fund. Excuse me, about two months ago, we changed it to where I got a new fund number to where all of the paramedic program money we bring in goes into the paramedic program new fund. So we can, we're still gonna run it like we do 1151, but it's gonna have its own account. That money goes in and money comes out of, that is specifically for the paramedic program. Because it's extremely difficult now, or was extremely difficult because when we would put paramedic program money in there, that was different than regular training money in there. Um, so we keep, we put training like normal EMT, CPR and all that still back into 1151 because 1151 funds the training side of it, but the paramedic program being different, separate, its own entity, it's has its own fund now. I have two other questions on why we're talking about the paramedic. First of all, did we ever do anything with the two people that owed us five or six thousand dollars? We need to, I need to contact a credit okay well, that's fine the other thing was did we we talked about it and i don't know if we talked about it prior to this this but did we ever reach out to any banks and see if there's any way that we could uh have like student loans or where they could borrow the money or i reached out to the local ones and the answer was apply for a personal loan yeah that's what i I mean, unfortunately, that was the only So us being a training institute and kind of like a small college like Ivy Tech, would we not, could we not get a student loan and then have the government just forgive it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, how we are set up now, no. We would have the possibility to get student loan and FAFSA and all that funding, but we would actually end up having to merge instead of like right now we're just affiliated with Ivy Tech we would actually have to merge our program to fall under their umbrella but then we fall under their dean their requirements and all of their stuff and I would rather not do not that. Lose my job. All right, that's all. <laughs> um, so yeah 1.1 .1 million for the year projected is at 2.3 uh, current cash ledger balance is 950000 and then the fourth page in your thing I showed you to where we are now hovering in the revolving account of 1151. Four or five days ago, we hit a uh, little over a million dollars sitting as a reserve in our bank account, so I'm pretty thrilled about that. Let me tell to me, though. Public information? Yeah. Fill out a FOIA. So, I don't want to hear that one. <laughs> uh, and then one thing I'm just letting you guys know, I did go to the council last night, last night, night before, <laughs> last night, night. Yeah. some night this week, a night in recent past, um, about an additional appropriation. Our runs are up 11% from last year. I didn't calculate for that big of a jump in run volume. Um, so for fuel? No, just like the run total. We're... We're up 11% on runs right now. Um, I asked for part in fuel, part in vehicle maintenance, just because we're running more trucks and they're running more, um, and part in medical supplies and part in payroll. Um, just because out of the 100 and I think 80 days we're at in the year right now, we've ran four and five trucks 82 days. But actually, I guess to clarify that you're asking for an additional appropriation for your own money. Yes, that you have in your account. Out of that one million dollars sitting, you're in not bank. asking for a, a additional appropriation from the county. No, you're, you're, it's out of a cash. It's out of eleven fifty one that you already yeah. have. So, so and, and I will say, if you look on the 
the second colorful page here, you'll see our run volume is up 11%, but our financers are up 12%. So it's not like we're down. When you, know, you run more, it costs you more. Yeah, so, and that's, I'm just letting you guys know that was an ask. Um, yeah. I didn't, you know, I did not project a 10% plus growth. And again, that could change. There's, yeah, um, you know, we are getting called into um, neighboring counties a little bit more, um, which that doesn't have a big contribution, but that is there. Um, a lot of it is just, um, a lot of it is just run volume and part of it is um, the hospital, you know, they'll hit us with three or four transfers at a time and it's either call another service or let them sit or call of our people and, and if we have the ability to call our people and we will but sometimes people want a day off and can't blame them so we're there's been quite a few times here lately um, that we're calling trans care or somebody to come see if they want to take a transfer that needs to go to, to help the ER with the time that they would wait um, you know I think we'll, we'll see how this we'll see how this run volume looks at the end of the year or closer but I think you know I don't we're not ready for a fourth truck by any means that's not what we're ready for um, but I think we do need to start evaluating our run volume to dedicated truck load that we've got and, and start looking at that with council how strange on this uh, uh, park man. we're getting called there every now and then um, yeah. Well, the calls I made. Um, they slowed it down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they slowed it down. Yeah, I called down to Clark County and said what's going on and that if we're going to be called, you know, mutual aid every once in a while is all right, but if we're getting calls to make runs that are every day, that's, we need to, and I told them that we need to have a meeting of some sort and come to some sort of an agreement before we're uh, taking an ambulance out of Scott County. And that's that was my worry was, you know, once it's dispatched, we can't turn it down. It's yeah. the 911 system. But the other part of that was that they talked to Dr. Yazel and, and he assured them that they were fine. So, yeah, like I said, uh, here of recent, it's just been normal mutual aid stuff, just like when we call for mutual aid, it's been nothing that's that's been difficult well and i told them I, and we don't mind doing it i just need if, to, if there's an accident on 65 to memphis hey it's, we'll it's it. easy for us to get there i mean uh but it's running no down into it's no different going to jackson county i mean yeah. uh, my concern was running down into jeff and into clarksville and we don't need to be in downtown jeffersonville or parksville doing runs for them so yeah. so that's where we're now if it's a mass casualty, which we would do anyway. Oh yeah. Uh, so and anyway, you know, if we're down there leaving Clark or something, that's different. I got a truck there, but making yeah. a thirty-five minute response doesn't really help. Nope. Uh, any questions about any of that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. First thing, uh, we and uh, we were contacted by Doctor Yazel a couple weeks ago. They want to. They he's trying to help us get on board with blood here carrying blood on our trucks which is a huge benefit and step for the county I just wanted to keep you guys let you guys know that that's there um, <clears throat> we kind of want to do a pilot between whole blood and pack red blood cells and with the equipment we've got our distance from University of Louisville Hospital and kind of the name we've made for ourselves um, he wants to see if he can get that on board so just kind of wanted to keep you guys updated on that. I know we're advertising for next month's council meeting for an appropriation for that as well because it's a big chunk up front, but um, I'm willing to pay that to, to get that here because that's a huge step for us. So, Does anybody else do that? Uh, closest one would be Eskenazi up in Indy and Carmel and Fishers just because their budget's like a bajillion dollars. Um, there's only three or four, four or five services in the state that do it, not many. Hmm. That's interesting. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we would have a partnership with U of L uh, with that. We already got it. Yeah. Uh, building update: Connex boxes are emptied and ready to be 
uh, moved. All right. If they could be moved by like Monday or Tuesday of next week, that would be great because Gossman's wants to come check grade because they had a cancellation. That was you want to be there tomorrow. Okay. Saturday or Sunday is fine too. <laughs> uh, That's even better. Uh, <laughs> they moved us up, a, you know, a couple weeks on the timeline. Where are we taking them? I don't know. Just they're, in the parking lot somewhere. Uh, so their only concern is they have to have room to get their equipment in there. So I don't know that I can leave them there. So what are you going to do? You want to sell them? You want me to sell them? No, nah, we'll take them down. Highway? Can Kevin use them at the highway department? Maybe. Right now we'll move them to the uh, health department. Yeah. Okay. And I want to say thank you to Brittany in the health department. Uh, she gave us access in a couple storage units she has, and we used every bit of it. So she was a trooper there, and she came in on her day off yesterday to give us the keys to her storage building. And I had um, five people that were off duty today come in and empty those things and all the stuff in the blistering heat. So they got it done. Um, we kind of weren't expecting to get moved up on the schedule, and they called me Monday and were like, we've got an opening. Do you want to do it? And I said, yeah. So. Absolutely. They've got to come check grade just to make sure everything is within spec. I guess my question to you guys is too, as long as it's not too much work and they just need maybe some grading done, is that something that we might be able to get done with equipment the highway department has to get it in spec so we don't have to pay anybody? I would say. Okay. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Wouldn't I, you? I, don't, yeah I, I don't know anything about it, so. Yeah. Their schedule is it's getting about right for them to get up. Well, you can give me the equipment, I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Call Kevin and see what you I think the last time that happened there was a live wire out there on the ground. <laughs> Anyways. Uh yeah. So that's all I've got on the building, but power's disconnected. My only concern is the two boxes are linked together and I don't know if they're linked underground, but the main power is killed. So if we go to move one box and wires come up, I assume we just cut them because they're not connected to anything anymore. So that's okay. that's my only you got some sharp scissors? Hmm? Okay. You got weed? Just drive fast. <laughs> <laughs> you pull hard enough. You might be able to get one trip. Uh, last thing that I've got, we discussed last meeting. Um, I have a resolution here if you guys would so allow for us to mit commit to a monitor purchase. I thought um, we did that. Nope. That was the truck. <coughs> I thought we did the monitor thing too. Mm -hmm. You gave me the permission to make the decision to bring back to you. Okay, so now you got I made a decision and I brought it back to you. <laughs> All right. So what is it? Same thing. Exactly the same. It's the same if you want to. So close. <clears throat> Talk while you're reading. Um, I'm look, uh, we're waiting on numbers from, I've picked one company for sure. And the only thing that would make me switch is if the other company comes below it, but we're right. still doing the financing. I got a question. Is this for the same? It's through the same company. The first one we did was for the truck. These are for monitors. So it's a different. <coughs> they have to have. So you would need to approve this similar to a resolution. Um, it's basically just indicating that you've uh, been you know, you pulled all the necessary power to authorize the purchase and have gone through the necessary steps to do so. Okay. Give me, if I need to sign something a, for them, I can. I just have a, um, and this is a, I guess, a Scottsburg Fire Department. The total comment. amount on this purchase is? 85. No, that's, oh, that's, that's a year. Uh, a total amount is 550, but then they're giving me money for trade-in, so total finance amount is 454. That is the lowest quote as well. Lowest quote? Or bid, or not bid, but it's the lowest amount. Okay. He had like four options with quotes from four different companies that supposed to have closed bid anything in excess of 150000 So when we talked about that, they all offered different things. There's not one machine out there that does the same exact thing. Okay. If we need to go through the process to do that, I can, but you're going to have one that's going to quote with, these are all these features that ours has, and then these are the ones that ours has, and then these are the ones that ours has. Excellent. It's not like a Lego set you can build, it's all or not. So the RFP, you just have 
Yeah. And so these are the parameters. Yeah. Yeah, it's not apples and it's apples and oranges. My simply or you know the language here sure. has to be you want to get what you need out of it. So. They're not all the same. It's yeah. like saying, hey, I want to pick up a truck, and then Dodge sends you one, Ford sends you one, Chevy sends you one, but they're all different options on it. Yeah, I mean, like, the only thing that I could do on that is, like, it has a power button. Like, that's, that's you know, everything else is the way the features that it has and all that are going to be completely different. Why he's looking at that? If you go with the company that you're talking about. you look at whether or not they have any types of contracts with state of Indiana or they do. offering of rates at this kind of prices. So that we have companies. we have a it's that B word. We have a special number that gives us contract pricing with with the companies, but it's to their equipment. Um Sabbath. Sabbath number. Okay. Has to be in it. Doesn't throw to be. Um, but it's kind of like one of those things that, you know, if you have a SAVIC number, it says this. It's almost like a government pricing for vehicles or a blue label program for guns or whatever. It's, there is no negotiation. This is what your price is. Okay. <clears throat> so. You can keep talking, I'm not trying to find <laughs> My question is, and this is not a commissioner question, it's a fire department question, is that you go to these new monitors or the pads that we're using, because we, when, when you went to the last, or maybe not you, but someone went to the last uh, monitors, Scottsbury Fire Department went to those monitors as well, so that we, our pads and our- Your ADs. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. they, would it? You know, if we had pads on somebody before you got there, all you do is just hook, you leave our pads and whatever. Because I am such a forward thinking and caring individual, I have thought about this. Take that red bull from me. This company that I'm looking at, <laughs> each monitor they buy, they send us a free AED. So that means we buy two monitors, we get two 80s, 10 monitors, 10 80s. Okay. So, so the we, one I carry in my car, it, we'd have to swap out and then we would sell those. Or you can keep them, you'll just know that we'll have to, there won't be the. We have to buy the pads. Yeah. Or they won't enter. They won't you have change. To pull, you'll have to pull, pull them it. off and then connect to what we've got. Um, now, still a resource in the community that's good to have, but we would be getting, we'd be, we're looking at, um, 10 monitors for all of our stuff. So that means we'd be getting 10 AEDs. So we could do the same thing to where, you know, we run with Scottsburg the most, you get three or four of those, you know, Lexington gets one, Vienna gets one, uh, Johnson gets one. So it's, you know, we we would keep one or two for like our community paramedicine vehicle and stuff, but we as we as EMS don't really have. <clears throat> so do you get a need for the AEDs themselves? You said earlier that well, you're saying the monitors they give you a price on. I guess what we could do as our department, because I think we have three, maybe four, but we could donate those to somebody else that would need one mm -hmm. that wouldn't interact with your... Yeah, I mean, because I those... I would ask for the cases back, but, um, you know, as far as the machines is, you know, we can... Give them I, back. I know. Give them back to EMS, and we put them on Gov deals. Or if we yeah. want to look at, you know, Monroe, or you know, someone that that might need them, and, and we'll say, hey, we've a, got these. We'll do a sidebar on that. Sure. Someplace. But uh, the ability for um, if if these the other company doesn't come back at a lower price, and this is still the lowest price, these are the ones that I'm going to be going with. Okay. And with these, um, they come with. The 80s, so um, the transition, right, and that's where I'm getting at. Is that you know I know the interoperability between us and fire will be the same. Okay. It'll just be we have to swap the devices out. All right. 
Back to you. So, would you say, what is the word you use? Civic? Savic. Savic. S-A-V-V-I-K. Okay. What exactly is that? It's uh, um, an entity in which you register with this company with the, like your government number that we got. Well, it's not DUNS anymore. What is it? Oh, the EIN. Or That's whatever. what I'm thinking. EIN, yeah. yes. So you register with that as the government entity, and then with certain dealers that have the SAVIC or contracts with the state that have those SAVIC affiliations. Okay. A purchasing agent for a political subdivision may purchase supplies that the purchase is made from a person who has a contract with the state agency and the person's contract with the state requires the person to make the supplies or services available to political subdivisions. Is that, that would fit. characterized yeah, as? You have to have that number to do business with, right? You have to set, get that authorized. Okay. Then. And are they required to make offerings to political subdivisions that have that number, basically? Like, are they, they contract with the state, right? And their contract with the state says, you must offer these prices to political subdivisions at these rates. Yeah, so us having that SAVIC number is a different rate than if I didn't. Okay. So if, if, if Mike calls from the fire department and says, give me a price and doesn't have that, his price is ten grand more than one. So then it sounds like we would be making a special purchase under Indiana Code five twenty. This needs to be in the minutes. I'm sorry. We'd be making a special purchase under Indiana Code five twenty two ten fifteen, subsection B, and we will need to retain. The contract in a separate file as all other contracts that we purchase goods and services for, and it um, we need to make a written determination and finding. You all will have to do that at tonight's meeting if you want to do this now. Um, that basically states that um, it is a special purchase. Why we selected the particular contractor and. The amount of the contract, the contractor's name, and the description of the supplies purchased under the contract needs to be maintained for a period of not less than five years. And it needs to be in a separate file for SBOA audits within that time frame. Mm -hmm. We do. So, in this resolution here, do we need to add anything to it? No, we might need to create a separate resolution. But that resolution is for the finance company themselves. Oh, okay. That well, can we can we approve this tonight and and rewrite our own resolution? Uh, probably need to do the, the resolution for the purchasing method first, but I can. Yeah, why we move on track. <laughs> so if you would just table that again. We're gonna table this particular item until later in the meeting. So what else you got? All right. Yeah. I guess go sit down and come yeah. back later. And then, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna give you this after you sign that. It's just the just hold on to that. Oh, okay. So I don't miss places. Chairman. Yeah. Jeremy. I think help you. All right. You'll sit on your lap. Go <coughs> Take your red bowl, right. or do you want to? You want to drink? You want rain and drink? You want to sip? <laughs> All right. First I'll, thing. I'll pass um, on that. The dispatch center has. Um, Leases the chairs that are on the dispatch floor. Uh, they replace them yearly. Our lease was up this year. It's actually up. I had to contact them. They didn't even let me know that the uh, leases were expired. But the leases are up. Uh, the price did go up a little bit this year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, man. So is this a continuing three-year contract? It's a new three-year contract, continuing the same thing we had. The exact same chairs that we have. 
Um, they do have new options that are available. This is just the quote for the year the we normally pay yearly, I believe. Um, I just, yeah. Um, uh, just to get a one percent discount. Does anybody else do this? I did not see anyone that did this. I looked when uh when I found out the name of the company who who does it currently. Um, I looked around and I didn't see anybody else that did anything like this. Um, so. I mean, are we I getting? I do have this in my budget. Also, it's already a line item for it. Um, so we're getting new or refurbished to new standards chairs every single year. You would be able to tell unless you worked on <clears throat> office furniture and office chairs. If you walked in, you would be able to tell if it was a brand new chair or a refurbished chair. So uh, I guess is is the service worth it? It is worth it. Each one of these chairs normally runs. If it's a twenty-four hour chair, is normally going to cost you around three to four thousand dollars a chair. So um, to get to wear one out pretty quick. Yeah, you do wear them out pretty darn quick. Um, based on my previous experience, you were getting new chairs every year anyway, whether you lease them or or you bought them outright. So. Um, so it's it's savings. Um, they come and fix it if it breaks, or if it's something simple, they send me the part and I fix it with a screwdriver. So, um, Mr. Fortner found uh, that. I don't know cost savings. We take them quotes on. This is just a renewal of a contract we already have. Well, I really yeah. have it, and it's only six thousand dollars. When was the contract originally entered into? Uh, three years prior to this. Jeff ordered that when he was here because he came in and presented it. <clears throat> said that it was the same thing as Jeremy saying that, you know, we can't buy these chairs every year or whatever, and this is a lease to, you know, and they just replace them. So 2021 was the What was our last lease? How much? Uh, it went up by about. I don't know the exact amount, but I know that they thought they had uh, planned in an extra one for the director's chair, because right now the chair that is in my office is just a chair that's purchased um, outright. It's not a, a leased. The only thing are the four chairs in the dispatch room itself. Um, but now it's not figured in for that chair to have it. Um, so it went up enough to, to eat the cost of one chair, essentially. So we were going to try to do five this year, from my understanding. Um, what Will told me before he left, they, they thought they budgeted to, to be able to get five chairs. So they're anywhere from eighteen hundred or sixteen hundred fifty-six dollars to eighteen hundred thirty-six dollars. Yeah. So you're saying probably they they'll just a couple hundred dollars each every year. <clears throat> And you say you have the money in your budget? It's yes. been budgeted for? Yep, it's been budgeted. Actually, you're contract. saying that they, they budgeted for five, but they, they're not getting five because yeah. the cost went up enough. That yeah, I have $2,400 budgeted this year for for that line. So, and it's roughly 23 Yeah, 23407 yep. I mean, I'm good with it because I know that those, that's a job that you know, a lot of people don't sit in their job their whole shift, but that's a job that they are sitting in a chair their whole shift, and um, these are built especially for that, so I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. That's my opinion, so what's your guys? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm fine with it as long as we, Zach, do we have to have a... Do we have to check to see before we in, enter into this? Mm -hmm. It's uh, for that make sure that there's not other people doing it, and we're doing the not for that least amount. amount. Not not the amount six that it's being offered. It, no, um, the only I wouldn't say I don't know what the right word is, but the 
under section 23 in the contract that I'm looking at. Um, I just want everyone to be aware that, again, not that it's an indication that we're not following Indiana law, but understand that the governing law jurisdiction relative to interpretations of this particular contract under what we have here is under uh, Ohio law mm -hmm. and yes. that any disagreements in regards to interpretation default um, would be venued in, uh, in the jurisdiction of Ohio but also venued in Oglise County Court. So it's a you know a venue and, and jurisdiction clauses are relatively common in, in most transactions, most business uh, businesses put that in there. Um, it's a convenience usually to them to litigate things in their own state, in their own court system. Um, but understand that, uh, and also, you know, interpreting the language of the contract under their laws. Um, it's not to say that we would not follow the laws of the state of Indiana that doesn't govern other issues that might run, but, um, you know, just understand that that is a. Yeah, I mean, you, I'm just clarifying, it wouldn't be different than any other company that had a out of state company that we were dealing with. Technically, they would always write their contracts <laughs> by their state laws, not ours. We often require them to interpret based on Indiana law and require them to, if there's any disagreement, to venue in our jurisdiction. Yeah. But I have to say that it's not possible uncommon. to do that. That it's not uncommon. Is it? It's not uncommon for a business to place. <clears throat> Clause in a contract like that okay. when dealing with private or public entities. It's like mine. It's not my private. Yeah, I mean, when you sign like when you sign like when I had you know sign up for a gym membership. Okay, you have a disagreement with your gym. You, know, you might be venued in the state of California. Yeah. Uh, to resolve any disputes that may arise under your contract, you know. I, they are relatively common in all contracts of any type of business nature. I just want everyone to be aware of that. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm good with it. All right, I'll entertain a motion to uh, sign an additional three year lease with uh, what's the company? Thomas Shelby and Company Incorporated for four uh, fleet chairs or fleet programs for the 911 center so in the total amount or i guess the first i guess each year each year, each year is twenty three thousand no two thousand three hundred and four dollars and seventy two cents payment in full if it was paid in the first year would be six thousand eight hundred forty four thirty two so i'll make that motion brandon makes a motion greg i'll say greg seconds that and i'll make that unanimous. and we are getting a one percent discount for paying yearly instead of quarterly so it's not much but it's a little something i just wanted to see for today okay thank you it's already updated at the state house and it's advertised everywhere. So what I just wanted to figure for today, I'll get your signatures on it today since I'm going to be up here. I uh, make sure Jennifer gets a copy of that. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Is there any other people in the state that that? Uh, Do you need me to uh, scan this and send it to you? Uh, yeah, if you don't mind. I sure will. Okay. Um. Above, just above your neck. <clears throat> Does anybody else in the state have a burn ban right now? There was one issued previously when I issued that one. Hang on a second, and I will. It doesn't matter. I just want to dry as it is right now. Yeah, there was only one other one issued. Should... 
Yeah. Uh, right now, it's just us and uh, Franklin <coughs> County, just you know, countywide burn ban. Uh, but it, it was, I, I know you and I had spoke on it earlier this week, and by the end of the week was, you know, definitely going to be my my cutoff. Like, I, it was when I was going to start bugging you guys and texting you guys and saying, hey, what do you think about it? Um, so, basically a day off of what, what I was thinking, like, if I don't hear from you about it, then I'm going to call you. So Yeah, it, it needs to happen. Um, and then one other thing, I do need a signature. I will, I will oh. say this. I want to ask a question because somebody asked me today in okay. Facebook messages. Uh, she goes, so who's going to enforce it and what's the penalty if somebody does? Um, unfortunately, if that's enforceable by the fire departments to put out the fire, there is no fine. Um, unless the county actually creates an ordinance <coughs> that would back up with that. Uh, so the state doesn't have a the state doesn't have any fines and we can make it a class C infraction or a whatever the lowest misdemeanor is you know like based on times you know like if it's your third offense then you go into a misdemeanor instead of being you know just a ticket you pay it's a it's a court case okay well I always thought there was a, a fine there used to be a fine associated with it um, but now the the template that you get from the state even says at the bottom, be sure you remind the commissioners there's no fine associated, and I was going to bring that up, um, you know, that there's no fine associated with this. You have to pass your own ordinance, and, and I can get a copy of an ordinance or something like that for you guys to look at. Well, sometimes, I mean, uh, fire departments are out here running with resources and everything else, and, and yeah. if it's a house on fire, and yeah. actually, even if it's a field, I guess, or something that whoever the property owner for that field, they can file an insurance claim against them, maybe. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, there's a lot of resources out there that gas yeah. and yeah. you know, um, and if they don't, if they walk away with not getting anything, you know, for their for their time and effort. Yes. Yeah. No, I completely so. agree with that because we've got it's I browse through the grants every day looking for the stuff the fire guys can, can try to get some money from. Um, just to let you know, uh, Joe and I, I just figured this number before I came up here. Um, as of today, um, in grants, Joe and I have brought in $19,780 in grants for DMA. So um, that brings me to signing a grant agreement with the um, Community Foundation. This is just saying, hey, we accept your grant um, for the commissioner for you guys to agree to that. There's, they sent me two copies. I just need one sign. You guys can look over that. So it's a, this is the grant that they are receiving, that you are yeah, this is the one that I notified, they notified me on Friday that I got this grant. So this That's is just I got the that recognition that they uh, gave it to you? This is the entering into the grant. This is okay. the... Um, so it's their yeah, official this paperwork. Is, yeah, this is, we're going to give you the money. So you have to follow these rules. Okay. Basically, they have to buy the drones and then submit a form uh, after the fact of uh, how did how did it work and did it work the way I told them to? I was going to. And did the project get completed? All that stuff. So two, it's, it's the same. So so this would be for me. Well, I didn't know. It's, it's entering into a contract, so I didn't know if I could sign it or if it was. Well, it says here, Operation Sky Came A, and it says purpose of project, re complete, report completed by. Well, I'm not going to. Oh, help. that's not. Uh, that must be the report then. That's the. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh that, there's the grant contract. That this is what I was flipping through my pages just looking for. Uh, okay. Here's the other grant. I'll entertain a motion to sign this green, grant agreement. With Scott County Community Foundation, that in the amount of eleven thousand six hundred forty dollars. I make a motion. Randy makes a motion. Greg, I second. Greg seconds that. I'll make that unanimous. So it turns out it's true. Is that asking for a notary on there? I do not look at the signature. Behalf of Scott County EMS, or EMS. Yeah. Commissioners. Yep. On this day, the twenty. All right. 
right, there you go. All right, I'll make a copy of this for you as well, and I'll get that turned in. Um, they want us to come to a meeting on the uh, breakfast, uh, Joe and I, are, so we'll be going to a breakfast at the Collins uh, Family Center on the 28th to right. uh, talk about it, and that's when we get our pictures taken and all that good stuff. Yeah. But, all right, yeah. sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, uh, Andrew's not here, I see, so. so. Get it turned in. <laughs> What's Andrew got with that? Well, is that, that, that twenty thousand dollar um, money that I don't know where to get that from? That it's the uh, Microsoft. He told me. Yeah, I think he called all three of us. Yes. He's told me and said that um, what happened was that Dell. Um, had a, usually has a agreement with the state of Indiana about it's about the licenses about, I believe yeah licensing things. things and this year Dell didn't do it and Andrew said I'm going to be short twenty some thousand dollars I think it was twenty is the number I'm understanding twenty even so all he needs is is an approval from us to go to council for the additional appropriation mm -hmm. so um, I'll make motion so you know you know what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. Right, very you know it. Okay, well, I'll, Randy's made a motion to allow Andrew to go for an additional appropriation for the Microsoft contract with the, with the county uh, for an additional. I'm going to say to be determined. It's in the twenty thousand dollar range, but if I say it exactly, it may That's be true. something different. So, I'll uh, second. Great second set. I'll make that unanimous. So, Mary Mayberry comes to Scottsburg tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I just uh, want to just point out just a, uh, a few things for folks to be aware of. Um, it actually starts tomorrow at Beachwood Park, um, and then it will be extended to the courtyard on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and we're just wanting to remind everybody that the square will actually be shut down for traffic on Saturday and Sunday. So, um, uh, for tickets and additional information, they can visit MayberryComesToScottsburg.com um, and just uh, let everyone know also, FYI, Family Fun Day is tomorrow at Beachwood. Uh, free <coughs> kid things will be going on out there. Uh, bouncy house, petting zoo, uh, train rides, uh, et cetera, that kind of thing. Uh, and it's, it's just all in, in a way to promote, promote it all and, and the revenue that it, that it brings in. So a um, great event out there tomorrow for folks that want to attend. So just also wanted to make everybody aware of the event and then everybody to know that the square uh, would be shut down to traffic for those All right. Uh, going along with that, and it really doesn't have anything to do with Mayberry, but uh, I don't know if anybody's noticed that and I haven't had any nasty phone calls that we cut two trees, two more trees down in the courtyard. But uh, if you've seen the over by the War Memorial where there used to be a big nasty looking pine tree of some sort, a cypress of some sort, and, and another scraggly tree, we uh, the county the county highway department cut them out, <coughs> ground, ground the stumps out, and C and T cycle Mike and Will, and Stephanie Lehman. Uh, that's the flower beds that they actually take care of, and they requested that we cut those two trees. Uh, I don't know if you saw it when you came in, but uh, it looks absolutely uh, like the rest of it should look. So, they really worked hard out there on that. Point. Yeah, in the last couple of days, with Mike's you know, father passing away at the funeral tomorrow, I mean, they, they were out there the last couple of nights, you know, doing the work. So, yeah, want to say, uh, Thank you to them and, and the other people, because I know Scott's Her Hardware does one on the other corner and the Moose Lodge has one on the other corner and uh, they're all looking pretty good right now. So, All right, moving along. And actually I want to give a, a tip of the hat to Eric Sexton because I know we asked him to do a lot more around uh, the courthouse here and all the weeds are out, you know, out of the out of uh, rock beds and and it looks good so appreciate that with him so uh, DOL salary increases I... those are the ones we had talked about earlier 
because the first round's due July the 1st. Um, this on exempt and non exempt. Mm -hmm. And I, I think Deandra sent you guys emails, if I'm not mistaken, and it, it'll help with the July, but especially the uh, January one that's going to be, I think what she figured is if you looked at the uh, elected official salaries and the exempt, like the chief deputy salaries, that's going to be an extra cost of around $265,000 to the county. There were three, and I think she sent you an email, there were three points that you had to make that we could actually move possibly our um, chief deputies back to non-exempt and pay them overtime for the work that they leave their salary saving instead of bumping it to the new level, you pay them overtime. What? It's gonna see how much each department will utilize over time. I mean, what, I know the chief what deputy elected, might well. What elected officials would get a salary increase? I could not tell you that right now. I hate to say I did not look at her forms well enough before she left to find out, but I can get that number to you. So is there something that we have to do tonight? And I don't believe, no, I don't believe to, I mean, we need to be doing something for the July, but I don't believe, I think the elected officials, I think most of those are good for the July, but it's looking forward to the January one that's going to be. So something happened, something needs to happen before July. That or we'll have to do um, <clears throat> retroactive pay. And this was something that, this is something that was a new law? That the Department of Labor about? sent that out, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, well, I mean, probably needs to be something that we have some sort of joint meeting with the council so that, because mm -hmm. they're the ones going to have to find some money. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, one of the things they were looking at, though, was like the commissioners, you guys would kind of set what the job descriptions are, the job titles. And I know kind of their thinking is they're waiting to see how you want to arrange the jobs, how you classify the jobs, and then to see how much money they're going to need to come up with, depending on that determination. So what you're, what you're saying earlier, though, <clears throat> if we change, like, a deputy auditor, a deputy clerk, yes. a deputy treasurer, yeah. those positions w could be non-exempt or exempt and pay overtime. Yes, so, they could be non-exempt and pay overtime. Well, but I think if I understand, I think Zach and I had spoken about this, you can't pick and choose. It'll have to be across the board how we would do yeah, that. I, I think that the, there would be a problem with making distinctions ac across the same classifications of positions between exempt and non-exempt, because the way it works is you meet uh, certain threshold criteria for uh, amount of money in a, in, a, in a year, and then you fall within one of the potential exempt categories outlined in FLSA. And then the employer uh, makes a determination that you do fall within that exempt status uh, based on you know, this review of the, the, the job duties and uh, <clears throat> responsibilities and applying that to the, the exempt categories and, and what they each cover. So I think it would be difficult to pick and choose right, mm -hmm. in terms of what you're doing. You need to make a determination across a classification of so all all chief deputies are not yes correct well i mean i could see that and i guess thinking just outside the box or you know in my opinion chief deputies if you're thinking about them making a bunch of overtime i wouldn't see where they would ever make overtime mine would but I don't know how many of the others. But you're talking about because they come to council meetings, meetings or, or, yes. commis or commissioner meetings. Uh, but I guess my flip with that, could they? Could we not comp that? Well, I'm not sure. Could, how you, could mean, you say okay? I think we, that's what they did. Could, could you say on Tuesday night, they, on first Tuesday night of the month or second Tuesday night of the month, 
the council has a meeting and, and you're going to be, for, say, you're going to be there three hours, two hours, whatever. Could you say, okay, on this day, you're go home and then and could, on meeting nights you go? I mean, we could do that, but I'm saying my office, I really need <laughs> I get that. But I'm just saying, you know, to me, the overtime would be, subs I, even if it was well, that, if you're talking three hours or five exactly, hours Exactly, yes, yes, you know, yes. <clears throat> so it's not a it's not hey I got 20 hours overtime right you know it's it's I got five hours overtime yeah. so I don't see where you'd ever get to a big threshold of money I mean and that was only that only be for this well, office because the only other thing I could think of is that during election mm -hmm. you yeah. would have the clerk the deputy mm -hmm. clerk would have some overtime yeah. possibly but you but know, I'm really not aware in the other offices it, I mean I hear us it might be a good idea to I mean what was the deadline? It's quick. It's July 1st is when it's supposed to start. So, I mean, you might want to schedule some form of a discussion with, uh, is it Wagner, Irwin, Shealy? Yes. About what you would need to, what considerations you would need to take in when you're making the determination about whether to reclassify or not. I mean, if you do not reclassify, my understanding is um, the change in the rules will take effect, and I think that that would require council to amend the salary ordinance mm -hmm. for, I think we, they've done an estimate and looked at the different jobs that it might affect, yeah. and those would need to be changed. If you do reclassify, I would just say that you need to make sure that you stay consistent. At least that's my understanding. But I think speaking with Wagner and Chile regularly. Well, they're they're having this problem all the state. They should, so, yeah. That should be so they should have an answer. So I, I think, yeah, I think I, I would reach out to them and see what kind of answer they're going to yeah. give you because they're, every county is going to fall into this guy, in this issue. So, but I would, I venture to say I would go with the with the overtime thing because I don't think you're going to generate enough overtime for those mm -hmm. classifications. You may have some every once in a while, but it's not. It's going to be right. minimal. I mean, so, so anyway, we'll move on from that and check with. And I'll I'll get with Wagner and Sheila and send you an email on that. Okay, uh, we got the cemetery board on here. Okay, I've done some research there. Out of um, tax collections, the cemetery fund gets 0. .00007. <laughs> so it's like a couple thousand dollars a year. So, they get. hang on, let's go back. So I think, send an email to Wagner or Chile. I mean, I think that we would need to be prepared to, depending upon what their like guidance response would be, to call a special meeting prior to July 1st to make a decision based on their guidance. So I would probably look at, I don't know if okay. it would need to be a joint session. I'm sure the council would like to know. Oh, I guarantee that. Uh, I will say this while you're saying all that. I won't, I can be here be a, a phone call but I will be out of town starting Monday. We would have to get back soon so that you can participate and uh, actively. Yeah, that's fine. I won't have the beach background that somebody else had. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have a boss and sell it, but maybe. Same rule applies. Keep your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, we asked Greg to make sure his pants were on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I I think that's right. And so the, so whatever you find out from them, uh, I guess we can set up a special meeting with the uh, with the council and just like send me an email or text or something. Tell me that you got what you're going to do. So. Cemetery board. Okay, I, they get like two to three thousand. 
two to three thousand a year. Yeah. So that's, how are we paying people to mow? That's coming out of the commissioner's fund. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that either. You mean it's coming out of this commissioner's budget? Budget, yes. Because I was going to say, because um, we we just created that venture thing with commissioner's fund. It looks like um, under the county general in in your location. Cemetery mowers, they were appropriated $25,930. Uh, so far, you spent $4,273.20. Out of 25? There's one fellow. Um, and that's where I, I mean, I used to know, I mean, it was, it's, it's almost like, and I'm going to say this, and Zach's not friends, but it's almost like the regional sewer board. Nobody knows if this thing existed. There's a handful of people know how it works, and they know that somebody's on the board or nobody's on the board, or they know we hired somebody or we don't hire anybody, um, and then we find out there used to be like a crew of three or four, and now there's one. One. Uh, and I know we don't pay them enough because that's why they don't mow, but uh, uh, so the cemetery board is that. I don't know, and I have not found. Uh, John, I know John. Asked, well, John knew a lot about it because I mean, it, but I, I, would, I just knew that Robbins, John Robbins, was the only person I knew that was had anything to do with it. Well, he's kind of been the overseer, and he only gets paid like a stipend of twelve hundred dollars. That comes twice a year. Gets a little bit of more. Uh, I think he gets an inspection fee, is what they call it, and then uh, mileage, where he'd go around and inspect the cemeteries, is what he's paid. Um, is there so no. we don't know who I mean I know I <clears throat> so we need to reach out and get them here to a meeting so we can figure out what's going that's on that's what I'm wondering and I, I have not had the uh, opportunity yet to look for there should be possibly an ordinance here that set that up I have not found it yet let me what are we talking about? an ordinance for the cemetery board let I have no idea how far back that let me call go. A couple of people that I think might be on that board and well I think Joe Gibson is on that board and I know from working with him in the regional sewer district he's a very good historian yeah. he could tell you if there's an ordinance probably the year it was done that'd be great so yeah. I'll get old Joe and find out how it works and what we need to do to get some people hired and we, it's obvious we have we need to increase their pay because I, yeah. I heard they made about $13 an hour 11 well, okay that's yeah. even worse <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh, I'll get a hold of him and find out some particulars so we know how we can function here. And if it's obvious we need to replace John uh, Robbins on the board, and, and or I don't know if he's on the board or if he's just the guy that runs the thing. I think he's on the board. Yes, I think he's on the board from what he told me. He was one of the members, but he's kind of been the one that just headed everything up, and he'd be the one that signed the claims and what have you. Yeah, I know that they have a mower, and I know they have a trailer, and uh, and actually, they use one of the county trucks. If I'm not mistaken, they just go yeah. hook up to it down there and yeah, pull I out think from there. So Kevin kind of takes care of it. Yeah, helps him with that. All. So I'll, I'll do that. We'll move on from there and see what we can do. We need to we need to uh, shore that up. I yeah, mean, that's yeah. been kind of uh, another well, hole we found. Yeah, uh, the courthouse repairs. That was the um, problem that Eric Sexton found yeah. with the. Um, That's what I called you two guys about. It. Yeah. Uh, from what I understand, with Andrew talking to him last night, uh, he was saying he's kind of going crazy with it because they keep changing, going into different pipes. And when they do, it sets off another alarm, and he has to silence the alarm or go into the computer system. Mm -hmm. And you know, he said, and just for everybody, the courthouse is secured with water. I mean, sprinkler system. So, uh, what has happened is where water has. We have a dry system, and and there and what a dry system is is that air is out of a compressor is pumped into it to keep keep a certain pressure. If one of these heads goes off, that pressure drops, and when it drops, it opens a valve and drops water into the system. That has happened over the years for multiple reasons. Once, one time it happened because a belt broke on the air compressor and nobody knew the belt had broke. 
and the air dropped out of the system because we had some minor leaks and it, it wouldn't keep up the pressure. Filled the system up. We always have to have somebody come and, and get the water out of the system, but what happens is some of these pipes are not level. There's low wide areas and water sets in couplings and everything else, and over the years it's rusted and now we have some leaks. Uh, they're going to repair all those couplings and, and joints and valves and everything else to make it, you know, 100%. So uh, I think they were in here doing some work. They're still continuing to do some work, and they've got some more parts ordered that they haven't came in to finish it. So, so that is what is going on with that. So uh, any questions? No. Transfer station. Jackson County RMC Utility, great. Okay, that's and you. That's the one for the. It, it really, what that requires is a signature. And just in a, so that I, I take it they finally got to us because I think it went somewhere else. It, it may have. I don't know anything about that, but this is a rebuild or estimation sheet, and it's to put a uh, light pole oh. out at Finley Farmhouse Collection. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, what happened is RMC had the address, we had, had the billing address we out there, and we were just trying to make it right to where the billing yeah. came here. So, yeah. just a little glitch in the paperwork, so we finally got that lined up. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to allow me to sign it, I guess, uh, to. Um, to put a security light out at uh, Finley Firehouse Fire Department for the collection site out there. So I'll make a motion to mark the time to a light pole. Randy makes a motion. I'll Greg, second. Greg seconds on it and make that unanimous. So you say it was 20? 20? Yeah. yeah. All right. Moving on. Mm -hmm. Covered bridge certification. Uh, yeah. I know that comes up every mm -hmm. so often. Just an annual thing that. This is just a renewal of a certification to the state that we have a covered bridge in, in Leota. So, I, don't know. I think we all signed it. So. Okay. so, I'll entertain a motion for us to sign the certificate to send back to the state. I'll make that motion. Randy makes that motion, Greg. I'll second. Greg seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous. So, and actually, for our people, uh, we actually did some work on uh, the covered bridge last year. I think we put a new roof on it, and I mm -hmm. actually was in with that, and and that actually brings up another thing. We might have to uh, get with Jeff Roddy and find out. I remember he brought up a. A, some, a board that was rotted out and he said, hey, I think it would be good for, but I don't know if that's something we need to follow up with and and uh, and replace, but I, I know he did a lot of that work. Yeah, he did a lot of that. All right, City Hall purchase update. I will say this, that uh, this has went on. Went longer than I thought it was going to, but I, uh, Zach, do you have something that you can give an update on or where we're at with that, or do you want me to say what I know? For the city hall purchase? Yeah. Um, I would just say that uh, we've received notification that the city has requested a 90 day extension. Up, it's up to a 90 day, it doesn't mean that that's necessarily a full 90 days. Um, I know that we're working with um, the city. Uh, to provide some information uh, to assist the city, I think, in completing the purchase. I don't want to get too much deeper into that, but the city, I believe, will be reaching out to us for um, official letters in support of the, the plan and the project. So uh, when those uh, come in, I'll be certain to send them to you. Okay. It is moving along, and it, we did get, I guess there was a hiccup, and uh, I'll just leave it at that, because I won't throw stones, but, uh, but it, uh, it's still on track. I mean, I think everything will close, and, uh, and I, I'll be, for one, not be the person that wants, to, wants, wants it to be 90 days, because I, 
I think that would be stretching it. So, any questions on that? Randy? No. Hopefully, it will be 90 days. Yeah. Well, I don't think it will be. Uh, consideration of the regular or special claims. We don't have any regular. We've got one special. There was one uh, through the Visitors Commission. It came to our office on the 13th. Uh, it came in as a regular claim, and we had to dig through and find it because they were calling said in Fair Board. I mean, it's for the Fair Association. They are very much in need of uh, funds right now. Since the fair's a couple of weeks. Like, well, yeah, we can have two weeks, something like that. All right, uh, looks like it's a, to the Scott County Fair Association, 75% uh, uh, of the total grant of $18,750. Uh, mm -hmm. so, I'd like to at that before we entertain a motion. But, And again, this is money that the visitor board has in an account for us. It's not coming out of the general fund or anything. This is all innkeeper's tax money. So, yeah. uh, but it's a grant that the people apply to the visitor board for grants throughout the year. And, and this money, again, all comes from people staying in hotels in Scott County. So I will entertain a motion to uh, pay this $18,750 to Scott County Fair Association. Make that motion. Randy makes the motion, Greg. I'll say. Greg seconds that. I'll make that unanimous. So. All right. Consideration of the payroll for June the 14th, 20th. Um, I sent you a copy of the resolution that we gave earlier. So, okay. If you all want to approve those, yeah. Okay. Kind of a tail end of the meeting. Isn't there a song about that? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> She's gone. So everybody had an opportunity to look at the minutes. Yes. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Greg seconds. So I'll make that unanimous. So, and on the payroll, everybody had an opportunity to look at the payroll. Yes. For June the 14th, 2024. I'll entertain a motion to accept that. I'll make that motion. Randy makes a motion. Greg. I'll second. Greg seconds. I'll make it unanimous. So there we have it. All right. You have a resolution number. Uh, it will be, wait a minute. We accept these minutes. 13, okay. Oh, you accept the minutes too? Oh. And Harold. And Harold. Huh? And Harold. Okay. Yeah, and we'll do okay, good. All right. <laughs> yeah, it'll be resolution number 13. 13. Unlucky 13. Clicks. <laughs> All right. Resolution is for the method of purchase for a certain uh, equipment, and this is being monitors for the EMS service. So resolution number nine, or resolution number 13, re a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of Scott County, Indiana, approving a special purchase method for the purchase of certain equipment, whereas the Board of Commissioners, the le legislative and executive body of Scott County, Indiana, that here for the attorney, that, whereas in a pertinent part of IC Code 5-22-10-15, Section B states the following, the purchase agent of a political subdivision may purchase supplies if the purchase is made from a person who has contract with a state agency and the person contract with the state requires per certain person to make the supplies or services available to political subdivisions as provided in 
IC code 4-13-1.6 or IC 5-22-17 whereas the board has authorized the EMS director as a personal agent for the Sky County to investigate the purchase of certain equipment necessary for provisions of the emergency service through alternative purchasing methods outlined in IC Code 5-22-10 ET. Uh, specific, specifically the section described above, whereas the equipment being purchased is unique piece of equipment with compared to other similarities situated vendors and a particular vendor offering the pieces of equipment provided discount rates to governmental identities in accordance with IC code 5-22-10-15B. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of Scott County and Indiana that the board hereby finds and determines that the proposed purchase falls within the special purchasing methods outlined in IC code 5-22-10-15B. The board hereby approves the purchase accordingly to the alternative purchasing methods and I acknowledge the requirement contained in IC code 5-22-10-3 for maintaining records of contract utilizing special purchasing methods. The manner, method, amount, and uh, character of the purchase has been considered in a duly noticed public hearing of the Sky County Commissioners Board. Board of Commissioners and their records shall be maintained in the auditor's office pursuant to IC Code 5-22-10-3. Resolution is, is effect immediately upon passage. I will entertain any comments or I will entertain a motion to pass resolution number 13. I'll make it. Motion to pass the resolution. Randy has made a motion to pass. Greg? I'll second that. Greg seconds that and I'll make that unanimous. I will try to be over there tomorrow. Okay. I need to call you and make sure you're there. Unless I'm wrong. Yeah. You'll be there unless you're somewhere else. Yep. I'm not there, I'm somewhere else. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, I mean, this one's on. <coughs> is, that, is that a resolution to you? What is, we didn't what, do a resolution earlier for you tonight. You no, know. this, okay, is, this is the one that we tabled okay. until we did that to sign this. That's what I thought. All of a sudden I was confused. I thought maybe I did give them wrong number. We're good. Okay. I think I'm going to say they're 20 footers, not 40 footers. They're 40. They're 40 footers. Okay. <coughs> Drag the rear end up. Mm. I get you to follow me for an escort. It's this last month of your budget. I can put that in. It's December. Perfect. Tis all now. This is the resolution that probably goes with. I was going to make copies of it all for okay, you. Okay, right. so I can keep it and um, email it to you. Okay, or there you would go. that be easier to scan it? Yep. Okay. And then mm -hmm. I've got all of the price list, and then I'll get you the other uh, actual uh, quotes, whatever you want to call them tomorrow. That way they can all be in a all folder right. and see that it was the lowest bid. Are you done? Sounds perfect. Huh? Until next week. <laughs> Did, we, did they need to make a motion to sign um, that? Yes, two pages. Um, yes, two pages you need to also authorize the signing of the resolution for the financing agent. Yes. All right, I'll entertain a motion to, because we passed a resolution number 13, now we can pass a the resolution or the resolution for the purchasing of the equipment through a finance company. So I'll entertain a motion to allow that signature. I'll make that motion. Randy makes that motion, Greg. I'll second. Greg seconds that and I'll make that unanimous. No, will that be listed as a resolution 2014? Yes. That's what I understand. Okay. You want to write it on there? You write, you're going to write 14 on there? Where? On yours. 2024. And if you don't care, either send me. One. You got to sign it, so I'll just wait till we're done. Okay. All right. They might want, they might want an original. They might. Yeah, okay. I have to have the original. Okay, no problem. Yeah.
Okay. All right, uh, Counselor, you got anything? I have nothing at this time. Craig, you got anything? I don't got anything. Uh, Randy, you got anything? Nick? Jennifer, you got anything? Yes, I do. Oh, I my. Wanna, well, I know, very rarely. I want to thank you guys, and especially you, Mike, because of the uh, WoW software that you worked so hard to help us get through the council last year. We um, we have our final approval on our settlement already, and usually we don't even have our settlement closed by this time of the night. So it was finished seven, uh, June 7th. We had our pre-approval ready. We wrote the checks Monday. Everything by 3 o'clock, everything was done Monday. And okay, then we got awesome. our final approval today. So yeah. just before I came in here. So. Well, those, uh, <laughs> well, that is all. well, I mean, <laughs> it's been a Sometimes when you're using outdated equipment and outdated software, there's a lot of new stuff out there. And quite honestly, I was worried about that because oh the company we were using, nothing against them, they yeah. just they just either didn't want to step up to the plate with new equipment, new software and stuff, and and um, it seemed like everybody in the county or everybody in the rest of the state was stepping away from them. So. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, hopefully, we see a big savings in the treasurer's office. Mm -hmm. Kind of times for tax season that they catch stuff that gonna see they're going to they're going to yeah. catch some things that hadn't been caught in the past, and and uh, hopefully we see a savings there as well. So, or not necessarily savings as much as more more money back. More revenue account. collected. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't have anything outside of. Uh, like Greg said earlier, Mayberry is going to be in in, uh, in in Scottsburg this weekend, and I know last year was the first year for it. There was a lot of, a lot. I, I noticed a lot of people in the community. I mean, and but th then after it was over with, talking with some people from Clark County and Floyd County, they were like, I didn't know that was going on. So hopefully, you know, word of mouth, they're going to see you know more people than they saw mm -hmm. last year. Uh, and uh, I just I think it's good for the community, and um, so that's all I got. So I'll entertain a motion to close the meeting. I'll make that motion. Randy makes a motion, Greg. I'll second. Greg seconds that, and I'll make that unanimous. So.